Oh, huh? hi, mister. I've been thinking about this. Mm -hmm. But, you know, one day I want to be a concept artist. Just like Very you. interesting. Huh? But who let you out of your cage? Uh -huh. Get back in there. <laughs> oh, hi. If you're here, you're likely curious about the job of a concept artist, aren't you? If you've ever considered art as a career, you've come to the right place. There's a lot of things you need to know about. I'm Mark. I've worked as a senior artist for 10 years in the video game industry and now I teach art for a living. I'm gonna let you know all about the awesome job of a concept artist. What may eventually be your job too. Uh oh, quickly, let's get this class started. All right, class is in session. Pay attention. If the idea of possibly becoming a concept artist has been floating in your head and you've been looking for more info on that career path, you've done well. You found your way to the right channel. Just like when I was younger, wondering about the same thing, there still isn't much information on the topic out there. But as someone who's had a long career doing concept art for many, many years, Hopefully, the next couple minutes will help answer a lot of your questions and very likely point out some things that you might have not even considered yet. Let's do it. After you pay the class fee of either one like or one sub, eh? nothing is free in life. There are four aspects in particular that we're going to cover today. A lot of this stuff I often discuss with my students during our feedback sessions. So, so I've tried to categorize everything into a short class going over first what the job is like, what it's all about. Then I'll talk about the lifestyle things to consider if you choose this path, then talking about path. I'll go over the actual career path you should be on or should jump on to turn concept art from an interest into an actual job. And then finally, I'll give a couple of portfolio tips as someone who sat in many applicants job interviews during my many years at Blizzard Entertainment. Tips that should help beat your competition for that coveted concept artist seat. I'm most familiar with the video game industry, so this is what I'll be referring to here. So first then, what is a concept artist? What do we do exactly? Well, concept art is very different from what an illustrator would do on a daily basis, for example. Illustrators, they work on conveying feelings, emotions. It's the kind of art that is often used to sell something, like promotional art. The job of a concept artist, however, is to convey ideas. For example, in a game studio, the designers might come out to you with an idea for a new character or character variations, a new creature, a new weapon, the final boss of a game, whatever. Your job is to take those words, understand what he or she wants, and uh, draw something cool to represent it. The art itself is not meant to sell a product. It's not meant to look amazing and polished. The main purpose is to convey an idea as best as possible. Of course, it's nice when the art is good, but the best concept artists are not necessarily the best technical artists. They're just very creative, have cool ideas. It's all about the ideas. You can be a great concept artist and a terrible illustrator. Just like illustrators can be great at what they do and suck at concept art. You can do both, of course, with enough experience. But usually speaking, the job is completely different. And as an artist, you will have to choose one path or the other or kind of risk, you know, spreading yourself really thin and not being particularly good at either. I feel like this is a kind of a distinction that's not really clear for most people based on the many portfolios I've seen over the years. But in reality, you know, the difference is really like looking at the path of a brain doctor versus a heart doctor. Both medical doctors, but vastly different career path. As a concept artist, most of the day you'll be drawing. So if you're into that, I am. The job is particularly fun. You'll typically interact with the game designers, you know, like the people with the ideas, and your art leads or art director, and make sure that what you do is consistent with the rest of the team's work. That might mean changing or adapting your style to fit the style of the project you're on. It's all about teamwork. All right, now that the job of a concept artist is a little bit more clear, hopefully, particularly the distinction between concept art and illustration. Let me tell you about a few things you should really consider if this is a career that you had in mind. I'm sure many of you have seen news left and right about like artist layoffs, crunch time, how hard it is to make it as a concept artist, or maybe even discrimination in the workspace. Ugh. Like some big studios like Ubisoft, Riot Games, and Blizzard recently have had their own scandals over the last couple years. First things first though, drama aside, 
video games are very popular. It's a growing industry. There are a lot of opportunities, which is super exciting. Most game studio teams will have a handful of concept artists working on any given project, usually split between character and environment concept artists. But you typically wear more hats in smaller teams and do more specialized art in bigger teams. And as a concept artist, you have a few choices of workspaces. Three different choices for the most part. First, you'll be looking at indie studios, often, you know, smaller teams, privately funded or crowdfunded. Then you have bigger AAA studios, usually funded by investors and shareholders. And you also have outsourcing studios whose main clients will be the indie and the AAA studios. And then you could also work freelance, I guess, basically acting as a one man outsourcing studio. So make that four options. I can't count. And since I'm mentioning outsourcing studios, let me plug a studio started by a few of my own students, Owl Ghost Studios. If you're looking to get beautiful concepts or illustrations, check them out. They're awesome. I'll put a link to them in the video description. Not sponsored or anything. It's just a proud teacher moment. Anyways, the main thing to keep in mind here is that your career will likely change a lot through its course. It's unusual for most artists to spend more than a few years in a given position, and there's a lot of moving around in the industry. And for that reason, it's also likely you'll have to physically move to where the work is. In my case, for example, I had a job in Montreal, Canada before being approached by Blizzard, and that's in a different country. So of course, I had to relocate to the United States in California to get the job, which I did. And that's pretty common, you know, bye bye family and friends. Peace out, girlfriends. I'm moving to California. To give you an idea from the original team that I was on while we were developing the world of Overwatch, almost every single artist works elsewhere now. Of course, how much you have to move initially depends on where you were born, given that the main hubs for that line of work are primarily located here in California or more broadly on the west coast of the US, in Montreal, Canada, lots of studios there and in Northern Europe. We shouldn't forget there's also like Japan, Korea and now China. There are big markets with lots of jobs, but as a Westerner, uh, that might be a little bit more out of reach. For an updated list of game studios around the world though, check out gamedevmap.com. It's a great resource. I'll put a link down below. Now, let's talk about overtime and layoffs, discrimination and drama, the fun stuff. Overtime or crunch time like we call it is something artists have always dealt with so far. Most studios will require it from their artists in some shape or form and it just sucks. It's typical towards the end of a production of a game, but in the worst case, it'll be, you know, almost like all year round. It's nice when you're compensated for it at least, but that's definitely not a given in most studios. Just keep in mind, it will likely be part of your job at some point, unless you're very lucky. And then there's the layoffs. Thankfully, it's never happened to me, but man, a lot of my friends had to go through this. It's definitely one of the worst part about the industry. It's all too common for a team to like blow up in size right before the launch of a game to ship it on time. And then for just the bulk of the team to be laid off once the game ships. Of course, I'd advise to stay away from teams that have a track record of doing that, but sometimes you just, you don't, you never know. Relatively speaking, I just want to point out that most companies try not to go down that route, but it does happen far too often. And then there's discrimination and also sexual harassment. Blizzard being the latest big company to get busted for it some, you know, months ago. Discrimination is definitely present in a lot of teams, maybe in a subtle way, maybe in more obvious ways where old rich execs, you know, think they can make power moves on employees. I was personally lucky during my time there not to notice anything going on in our art teams, but my wife who also happened to work there on a different team had a very different experience. It's private stuff, so I'll leave it at that, but, but the good news is that all the public exposure these issues have been getting in recent years has definitely forced things to change for the better. There's a lot more work to do, but things continue to improve at least. I don't want to scare you too much though. It happens, but still uncommon. With that said, all in all, I really enjoyed my career in games. The decade that I spent doing this as a job was so much fun. It's definitely not for everyone. You gotta always be hungry and always be improving to stay relevant. But I think that's kind of normal for a skill that's so easily accessible to everyone. I always compare it to like competing as an athlete. If you stop practicing and improving, you're kind of on your way out. If you keep pushing though, the sky's the limit. All right, so now let's take a look at the steps you need to take to land a job as a concept artist. First things first, pick a path, character or environment, art, which one will it be? You can only pick one. Of course, you can expand later when you get a job, but if the goal is to land a job, get there ASAP by focusing your efforts effectively. Whichever you end up favoring, dive deep into the relevant fundamentals. If you're all about environment art, for example, forget about anatomy for now. 
it's not going to serve you as well as perspective, for example. Learn from others that have experience related to your goal and start collecting all kinds of references to use for your art. Then document as much of the process on social media to start getting visibility. What people love to see on social media is not just good art. It's an artist that starts off like so-so, but quickly gets better. That's exciting to follow. That's like motivating to people. So they'll keep an eye on you. And then when you get enough eyes on you, like not literally, but you know, figuratively, opportunities come. If you don't upload much though, if you're not really active online, don't show much progress. How is that interesting for anyone? It's not. It's easy to get into art, so a lot of people try. It's not like motor racing, for example, where only a few wealthier people have the means to participate. Since literally anybody can start drawing, you have to push harder than everybody else. Practice more, party less. It's an amazing job when you get it. I'd argue making art for a living is the best job ever. But there is a social cost to pay to get there and it's really important to understand that. Once again, I consider artists like athletes. You gotta keep hitting the gym, the track, the pool, whatever it is to stay in better shape than others. It's the same here. If you can show significant growth over a period of a few years, creating content others seem to enjoy also, then you'll probably do great as a concept artist. I mentioned social media since concept art is all about selling an idea. And there's no better way to test your ideas than by having as many people as possible see and judge them. If you never get any kind of feedback on your art or only feedback from your immediate family and friends, there's not much value in that. That's too small of a sample. Your job one day might be to contribute to a game that will amaze maybe millions of gamers. So you have to get good at creating concepts that the general public will enjoy, not just yourself and your bros. Don't underestimate the value of your online presence. Think of it as like um, doing market research. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you get good enough to do this as a career? Oh, I know. Try my complete art education program, of course. Silly question. Check the coupon in the video description for a huge discount on a program until the end of the month only. Not much time left, but worry not, I'll be extending the discount into next month as well. It's just going to be a slightly smaller discount starting next month. Just like all my students who turn pro, you could be next. I have no doubt it'll help you reach your goal faster. Highly recommend you check the link below to learn more about it. Now, very quickly, my main portfolio tips for someone thinking about going into any field of art would be to focus on content that will take you there, as in concept art. If all you have in your portfolios are like portraits, that's not gonna cut it, kid. You want to show off relevant skills, artworks that will show the potential employer that if they were to hire you, you'd be as plug and play as possible. Time is money. So if it looks like you'll need a lot of training, that's not as interesting to them as someone who's ready to go, whom they know they'll be able to count on right away to contribute to their project. In your portfolio, include art that could potentially have been made for the studios you're interested in working at. And uh, well, make sure that most of it is relevant. Throughout the years, I've seen so many applicants show up at Blizzard, for example, with a portfolio that looks like they wanted a job on Call of Duty instead, or just didn't know much about the game we made at all. So their portfolio had nothing to show us to be able to actually do the job, or that they had passion for our style of games. That stuff is important. Once again, concept art is all about conveying cool ideas in the best way possible. So while it's fine to do fine art for yourself, I wouldn't include that stuff in your portfolio since it doesn't really showcase any important skills for the job. Instead, there should be a lot of character or creature concept art if that's the path you want to choose or more environments, props, concepts if you prefer that specialization. Even though on the job, your actual work won't need to be super polished, it's good to spend some extra time on your portfolio pieces, not only to create cool concepts others will enjoy, but to push the polish beyond what is needed for the job just to make sure that you stand out as much as possible as an applicant. Keep updating your portfolio often, just like your social media accounts, and keep pushing, always. Do that and, uh, well, you should eventually have a career you absolutely love. It takes a lot of hard work, sure, like anything worth getting. But it all pays off when you finally get to your goal. If you don't know just how good you need to get, Find a studio that you want to work at, or like a few of them, and find the portfolios of some of their more junior artists to gauge their level compared to yours. You should be at least as good. And uh, well, that's gonna wrap it up for today's class. If you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up and share it with someone you feel might benefit from hearing this information. There's a lot of money to be made as a concept artist, doing a job that's super fun. How much better can it get? Now, make sure you have your notifications enabled to be on time for next week's class. Also, check out these other classes you might like. I'll see you there.
Who let you out of your cage? Get back in there! <laughs>